and welcome to another episode of the Grow Your Occupancy podcast. I'm Julie Podowitz, CEO and founder. If you would like to learn more about what we do for our clients at Grow Your Occupancy, you can find us on growyouroccupancy.com. If you enjoy our podcasts and YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It helps others find us. And I am so excited today to welcome Elizabeth Club to the show. Elizabeth, hi. Hi, Julie. Great to be here. Let me tell you all a little bit about Elizabeth. She is the founder and CEO of MyFlock, and she's on a mission to change the way we think about aging. An optimistic and passionate leader and learner, she is doing her part to create the world in which she wants to live. Elizabeth was a care partner for her father who lived with Parkinson's disease, and she is now a care partner for her 86-year-old mother who lives with a great deal of joy and begins most days with an early morning ride on one of her horses. Elizabeth has enjoyed a career in strategy and innovation with corporations, consulting firms, and startups. And like I said, she is now delighted to be building and growing my flock to empower families to take the financial friction out of caregiving. Welcome again, Elizabeth. Thank you, Julie. I like the emphasis on friction. Yes. (laughs) Well, I love the fact that your 86-year-old mother, what is her name? Emmy. Emmy starts the day uh, horseback riding. I just returned from spending time with my mom for her 85th year old, uh, 85th birthday. So she's now 85 and she spent her 85th birthday on the tennis court. Awesome. What's your mom's name? Helen. Helen, happy birthday to Helen. That's Uh, great. Thank you. I love her and she's she's the best. So uh, tell us a little bit about my flock. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. So we are a um, we are an expense management and payment system really focused on empowering older adults and family members. Um, Some people describe us sort of as a corporate card for families. Um, And and we are working with both um, trying to sell solutions for both older adults and for family members who are trying to help um, on caregiving. Um, particularly around financial caregiving. So interestingly, 92% of family caregivers, of which there are 53 million plus um, in this country, um, are also financial caregivers. And 75% of um, those people never talk about that role. So it's pervasive. It is um, something that a lot of people are involved in, but it's also emotional for people and every family is different. So it causes a lot of stress and anxiety, both for older adults and for family members. So um, we're trying to take all those financial friction points out of family caregiving and financial caregiving so we can really focus on the care and the way we care for one another. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, finances certainly can cause friction, right? (laughs) Yes, they can, yeah. can you break it down a little bit? What, why did you start this company? What was sure. really motivating yeah. you? So um, my background uh, is in sort of strategy and innovation. And about 12 years ago, I started, and I worked across industries in healthcare and pharmaceuticals and a bunch of different industries. And about 12 years ago, I started working in the older adult aging space, really fell in love with the space. I was working with corporate clients and there's so much um, need there in the space. And there's so much that can be done and so many really good people working in the space. It became sort of a passion of mine. And at the same time, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm from the Northeast and my father was living in his own home um, as he got older and he was living in New York. And he was also, as you mentioned in my bio, he was living with Parkinson's disease. Um, Eventually he also became legally blind. Uh, And my dad, um, I have two sisters in Connecticut. Uh, Both of them are physicians, so they helped him with a lot of his um, healthcare related things, and I helped him with a lot of other things, including his finances. And my dad had, we had a caregiver who lived in his home with him, and he had a lot of people in his life, which was great. He was a, he'd been a professor who was very involved in his community, so former students and friends and a bunch of different people, and his solution when he was no longer able to ride his bike to the grocery store and get his own groceries and do do his own errands was basically to give anybody his checkbook. And Mm. that is not a good solution. I can say do not recommend, right? 
And so it was very stressful for me. I was um, on his bank accounts to trying to help him. Um, and it was very stressful for him. And because he really was living in a fear um, that he was going to be taken advantage of or become mm -hmm. the victim of fraud. And um, he was the victimized, um, not to huge extents, but he was definitely victimized. And the part that was the hardest for me as his daughter was that he was living um, in fear. And uh, so when he, he died in 2016, and I was already working in the space, in the aging space, and I saw this huge problem that affects so many people, and it's only going to get bigger as um, the sort of older adult population grows, and said, this is a big problem. Really, the biggest part of the problem that we were looking to address was elder fraud and financial exploitation, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. at the time was the numbers that were out there were sort of $37 billion a year, it was estimated, and but highly underreported. Wow. The latest numbers, yeah, and the latest numbers um, that we saw were $114 billion a year. And it's pretty extraordinary. And people are afraid. I know, I know. And it, people are afraid to um, talk about it. Um, people are, who've been the victims of fraud oh. are afraid to tell people because there's shame and there's fear of reporting it. Um, and oftentimes one of the, one of the responses that family, that older adults get when they tell their family members is, well, we're going to just take away your money. Um, we'll take over management of your money. And really nobody wants that. It's like taking over sort of your agency as an adult. And so they, they don't report it. And that then we hear these stories all the time now because of what the, the business that we're in that I didn't find out until after my mom or after my dad died right. that they were defrauded oh. out of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, it, and I, I, yeah. <laughs> I hate to, I mean, my mouth saying, you know, Ben, did I hear you correctly that some estimates are over a hundred billion with a yeah. B? Yeah. I, it yeah. just, it, I'm just a little amazed uh, in a horrific way. And, you know, it's, it's terrible. We have to even talk about it, Elizabeth, you know, people taking advantage to massive degrees of our, the population that uh, you know, we all serve and uh, respect so much, but that, you know, scams and, you know, financial, like you said, fraud and, and really preying on, yes. um, you know, those who have, you know, are, uh, you know, maybe frail, uh, maybe, you know, technology, maybe lonely at home, uh, talking you know, or talking on the phone, may, may, may not have, you know, all, all the information. And it's just absolutely devastating. And like you said, it's interesting that so much of it isn't reported because the victim feels shame that, that they were taken advantage of. Maybe they weren't you know, smart right. enough or savvy yeah. to figure it out, uh, which is also to live in fear, but also to live in shame. Yes. And it's really interesting, Julie, because um, fraud, elder fraud and financial exploitation, there is a tendency um, to blame the victim, to say, oh, you mm -hmm. should have known or yeah. to how did you fall for something like that? Right. Yeah. And so that and that's when you when you were said. Um, speaking earlier about, you know, talking about these things. It's so important. We talk about this. It's so important to start these conversations early um, and not have them be about shame. We're all, by the way, the latest report that came out is the people who are victims of fraud, especially sort of um, stranger fraud and scams, are getting younger and younger because the fraudsters are getting much more sophisticated, you know, yeah. and they they continue to find new ways. And so the more we talk about it together, um, the earlier and de destigmatize being, you know, becoming a victim of fraud and don't blame the victim, the better we all are. Because at some point in our lives, we're all going to be victimized by fraud, probably. You know, they're very sophisticated um, technologies now. And so understanding to talk about these things and these new things that come up is really important as families and but also as people who are sort of in what we call the tapestry of care we're big proponents of earlier earlier and easier conversations sure okay so can you give us uh some tips maybe what to look for maybe what to share with one another certainly in our in our older uh loved ones yeah yeah 
Yeah, so there's some really interesting, there's a couple different things. One is um, the one if, is if their new friends um, enter an older adult's life, um, that okay. they that certain that become new friends and they can um, sort of take over in a way. And that's something to be be wary of um, and be sort of asking questions in a very respectful way. Um, one of the earliest things, the indicators, and this is going down a bit of a different path, but it makes people more vulnerable, is um, when one of the earliest signs of cognitive changes is actually spending pattern changes. So even before you can um, talk to, when you're talking to someone, if they're experiencing cognitive changes, sometimes if you can see their spending pattern, um, you can see that something's going on with them. And that's very dangerous because they're much more susceptible to fraud and to financial exploitation because trust levels can go up um, mm -hmm. in older adults. Sure. Uh, and so that's a, that's a sort of a big issue. One of the things that we know and the science and uh, studies are coming out now, although un unfortunately there's not enough hard data because again, it's underreported is that older women are much more likely to become victims of elder fraud and financial exploitation. Um, and elder fraud and financial exploitation is pretty tricky because oftentimes it is the person who is, uh, it could be a family member, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. we don't like to talk about either, right? Um, and, but, but when women are left with um, family members who are victimizing them, mm -hmm. there, there's that shame and that embarrassment as well, that they're their family doing this. Sure. And so they don't tell anybody. And so what we are proponents of is having what we talk about is sort of making the invisible visible to have more people involved in the conversation. So if there's a, a person who's coming into an older adult's life who's trying to befriend them in a way that is isn't inappropriate um, and trying to distance them from family or you know, take them away, that's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, building those trusting relationships. And it's tricky because you brought up, Julie, there's loneliness. Yeah. Right. And so getting on the phone and talking right. to people. Right. And and fraudsters know that um, and they take advantage of that. And so having those conversations with your family members and making sure that you're connected with what's going on in their life mm -hmm. is really important. And sure. if you hear something that sounds off, um, then, you know, probe on it. I'll give you an mm -hmm. example. OK, my my mother by the way, older adults are very um, tech savvy now. A lot of older adults mm -hmm. are using smartphones, you yeah. know, especially during the pandemic, um, they're using smartphones. And so my mother called me, we, no, she didn't call me. We were on the phone a couple um, months ago. And she said, oh, I got a call from Apple. And um, they, they made a mistake on my account. So they're going to refund me some money. And, I, and it was just an, in passing. She was like, aren't they nice? And I was like, huh. Let's talk more about that. Uh -huh. And so, the, right? And so, so then they went through the gift card thing. They were going to send oh, her, right? So, gift cards, yes, red yes. flag, red flag, red flag, and gift cards, red flag, red flag. That should be a universal. Anything okay. to do with gift cards, asking yep. you to buy gift cards for somebody, red flag. Okay. Um, new new friends that are um, unexpected, that you are not aware of, red flag. Just yeah. probe a little bit more, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and if behavior changes, that they don't want to spend as much time with you, even in families, something's going on, okay. probe. Because okay. a lot of times people will, um, there, is, there are, and there's some great work. We work with the AARP. We're one of their portfolio companies. AARP does some great work on, um, on sort of scams and, and fraud alerts. They, people, when fraudsters will call older adults, they will say, do not tell anyone. You know, I mm -hmm. am, you, yes. And so if you're sensing something's going on, um, ask questions in a very non-threatening, non-accusatory way, okay. because you want to maintain those really strong connections with, with your family and older sure. adults. Yeah. One thing uh, you mentioned tech savvy. My 91 yeah. year old stepdad is is more tech savvy than I am, and and certainly my mom's uh, on the computer a lot. And as a general rule, and I'm not an expert at all, but it's uh, when you you know, get an email and it's like the link to click. Don't click don't link. Don't click a link. Don't, don't click, click a link. link. Is that is that good advice? And 
Yes, don't click a link. And if you have a question about clicking, call a friend. Oh, great. Call, don't call. click. Call. Mm -hmm. Don't click. Yeah. And that's something we all have to remind ourselves. It's not sure. just it's not just um and texting the same thing now. They're doing it with text. Mm -hmm. They send a text saying, click this link, congratulations, anything with that. Um, mm -hmm. do not click a link. Right, right. It is yep. not your lucky day. Yes, it is. It's not your lucky day. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. My goodness. Anything so else important. you'd like us to think about uh, or talk I, about? Yeah, I think one of the things that's really important, Julie, is that the um, the fraudsters and scamsters and all of those people continue to develop new ways to do it. Mm -hmm. And so right now we know don't click a link. We know, you know, texting is, you know, they're doing texting, they're doing via the phone, all of those things, but who knows what's next, right? Yeah. And so the important thing is to continue the conversations um, and, and have them early, because one of the things that we know is that um, older adults are, are prime, sus very susceptible, susceptible susceptible to, to um, becoming victimized because their trust level naturally sort of goes up. And um, they also, as fraudsters know, control a lot of the wealth in this country. And so that's, a, that's something that makes them a prime target. Yeah. And the social isolation, and so staying connected on a regular basis with yeah. um, your family members is very, very important. Excellent advice. Yeah. Yeah. If someone wants to learn more about what you do and your company and helping prevent yes. uh, fraud and financial exploitation, how does one do that? Um, our website is um, www.myfloc.com. Um, and I'm happy to have anyone reach out to me. Um, my email is ewclub at myflock.com. Great. And I will uh, put both uh, all of your information in links uh, in post and club is with two B's for those of you uh, listening. Yep. Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. It's not a topic that's necessarily fun, but so important and right. difficult conversations and leaning, leaning into them with respect. Uh, and I think it's my takeaway is the um, shame and the yep. Yeah. So to, and don't do, shouldn't be shame. Take right. it, take it away. We're right. all, we're all in this together. That's our yes. whole, you know, we really are in this together. So absolutely. Um, yeah. There's, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much, Elizabeth. Thanks Thank again you, for Julie. listening to the grow your occupancy podcast. Have a great day and we will see you next time.